This clip covers uh, the der uh, derivation of the AD curve, the aggregate demand curve. We'll do so graphically. Uh, just to refresh our memory, uh, demand is uh, by uh, the sources of demand, consumption plus uh, investment uh, plus government expenditures. Consumption is a function of disposable income and investment is a function of aggregate demand and the interest rate decreasing in interest rate and government expenditures are assumed policy variable therefore exogenous the financial market uh, is characterized by uh, real money supply determined by the central bank uh, being proportional to uh, transactions demand uh, times the liquidity preference function uh, which is decreasing in the interest rate so these two are the relationships we know well that describe the ISLM model. Uh, so that's ISLM. And we're going to ask the question, we're going to answer the question, how these two can be combined to give us a relationship uh, between, relationship between, well, P and Y. How do we get to a relationship between P and Y? Because that's the two variables that we want to talk about in the ASAD model uh, with the aggregate demand curve and the aggregate supply curve. Uh, so in that sense, you see that what we're doing with the ASAD model is to make endogenous, to bring to the fore the price level. In the ISLM model, we had uh, income determined in the goods market and the interest rate determined in the financial market, but prices were assumed exogenous. The labor market uh, concerns uh, wages and prices and now with all these three markets together we can determine uh, output and prices together. So how do we do that? Uh, to get from uh, these two relationships, uh, the goods market and the financial market, to uh, a relationship between P and Y. I will go to a new page and show you uh, a graphic derivation. First of all, let's recall the financial market. Here we have I, here uh, the real money stock, and then we have the real money supply determined by the central bank and some uh, money demand function uh, L of I that is downward sloping. It gives us a uh, equilibrium interest rate at this point. Now suppose that prices rise. So P rises. What happens? Well, the real money supply decreases. So if P here in the denominator rises, the ratio falls, uh, this curve shifts to the left, and uh, we see an increase in the interest rate. That we have in fact used to uh, derive uh, or th that we can translate to the ISLM model, namely, I'm just going to sketch this out over here. We have here an IS curve, which is downward sloping, and at the initial interest rate, an LM curve that intersects the uh, IS curve at this level of output. Now, uh, what happens if the interest rate rises? Well, the interest rate rises and LM contracts, so the money supply contracts, we have a monetary contraction that shifts LM up. Actually, uh, let me emphasize this as well with a different color. And we get a new equilibrium here with LM2 where the interest rate has risen and output has fallen. And moving along the IS, investment falls and output falls through the multiplier process. And now comes the punchline, namely how we translate that to uh, the ASAD model where we have P on this axis and Y on this axis. First of all, let's carry down uh, these output levels. You see that uh, here we have Y1 and this is Y2. That is the decrease in output due to the interest rate rise. Now, we started out with an increase in P, so there's some P1 that is 
here and a P2 that is higher. So P1 and Y1 go together and P2 and Y2 go together. So we have, in fact, derived a negative relationship between prices and output for the AD curve. This is the AD curve. Let's go to a new page and just draw this uh, once more downward sloping. First, what is the causality here? Why is this curve downward sloping? Uh, as before, this question is relevant because we don't want to fall in the trap of assuming uh, that uh, well, if prices fall, there's higher demand because stuff's cheaper. That does not make sense. Uh, we're talking about the macroeconomy, so we need to have a macroeconomic channel of causation here. And the reason or the, the causality that uh, we can uh, quickly derive is firmly based on the ISLM model, so on the goods and, uh, goods and financial market models that uh, we know so well. The point here is, if P rises, M over P falls, the money supply, so I rises, which in turn means that I falls, Y falls, through the multiplier process. So causality goes from P to Y. Uh, and we can put that in here with a big green arrow. Causality goes from P to Y through the financial market. So through the monetary transmission channel here, uh, output reacts to prices, prices uh, to price changes. Let's get rid of that big arrow and second, think about uh, policy. How does this shift? Uh, how does this curve shift? Uh, in shorthand, we uh, might write um, the AD curve as y equal to uh, a function f of m over p, g, and t. These are the three crucial variables, namely m determined by the central bank and g and t, fiscal policy determined by uh, the uh, elected authority. Now. If M rises, we have a uh, monetary expansion. We get a rightward shift, meaning for any given price level, higher M implies lower interest rates and higher investment and there, therewith higher demand. Uh, that, of course, means in con uh, in reverse that a monetary contraction uh, leads to uh, a leftward shift uh, of the AD curve. So uh, if we have a monetary contraction AD shifts left if we have now talking about fiscal policy fiscal expansion G rises or T, uh, T falls we get a rightward shift so that for any given price level higher G implies higher expenditures and through the multiplier process we have a higher uh, level of output.